Hello, friends. In this video, I will continue the topic of exploring the capabilities of Zigbee network coordinators. Specifically, simultaneous work with multiple clients, servers, I made a separate video about this earlier, and you can find the link to it in the description. Moreover, it is precisely such a model that I am currently using in my work configuration, where one coordinator is connected to three different servers. However, in this case, they all run the same system, Zigbee 2MQTT, the servers essentially duplicate each other. And in this video, I will conduct another experiment. There will be one server, but two systems, Zigbee 2MQTT and ZHA integration. We will check if they can work simultaneously on the same coordinator with the same system. An important point, this will not work with USB sticks, because the system that connects to it first occupies its port, and the second system will not be able to connect. Before we start, as usual, I ask you to like this video, it will help others interested in the smart home topic find it, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so before. This screenshot was taken on one of my working network coordinators. I have two of them, and on each of my three home assistant servers, connections from which are visible here, there are two Zigbee 2MQTT add-ons installed. But the point is that the coordinator works perfectly simultaneously with several systems, in this case, Zigbee 2MQTT. As the experimental platform, I will be using a fresh install of supervised home assistant on a Raspberry Pi 4B, exactly the same as I showed in my recent video. In addition, system monitor integration sensors are installed here, and you can also find a separate video about this via a link in the description. In the add-ons menu, there is currently only the file editor, which will be useful for manually editing configuration files. With its help, a link to the system information page has been added to configuration.yaml, which for some reason unknown to me was removed from the standard settings menu. This is what it looks like. Here the system information, event log, and options for rebooting the core, supervisor, and system are conveniently arranged. A link to the lesson in which all this is shown in detail is also in the description, so in this video, I only mention the settings I have made. As a coordinator, I will be using Zigstar use G01. A detailed review of it is also in the description, but you can equally use other versions, such as Zigstar and its Chinese clone Hangeek, as well as SMite series devices. Currently, there are no connections. Of course, I also left a link in the description to the lesson with a detailed story about the installation and setup of Zigbee 2MQTT, but I will show the main points now. We start with the Mosquito Broker add-in, a messaging system that acts as a link between Home Assistant and Zigbee 2MQTT. To clarify again, this is specifically an add-on, not an integration. We will get to that a bit later. From the additional settings on the Configuration tab, I only add a username and password, which will be useful for connecting external devices and programs like MQTT Explorer. We start and wait for Mosquito Broker, the server part, to fully launch. Now we move to the next step. Zigbee 2MQTT is also an add-on, but it is not part of the standard set of Home Assistant. It needs to be added. For this, we click the button in the form of three dots at the top right and select the repositories item. Here we add the path to the Zigbee 2MQTT repository this will add it to the add-on store and will track all updates. I install the standard version. There are also versions for developers and proxy. After installation but before launching, some settings need to be made. By default, the add-on is installed in the same folder where all the Home Assistant configuration is stored and creates its own subfolder Zigbee 2MQTT. If this is the first instance of the add-on, it can be left as is. If not, change its name. Note that the root folder here is called config. In the root folder you will see in file editor is called home assistant. This is normal, in fact, it's the same thing. Manually create a folder named Zigbee 2MQTT. Enter this folder and within it, we create a file named configuration.yaml. In it, we will specify the primary settings that are applied when launching the add-on. Port data can be taken from the corresponding page of the coordinator interface. The main point here is the IP address. I also presented the template for the basic configuration in my video about installing and setting up Zigbee 2MUDT. Another important point, the name of the root topic in Mosquito Broker, if you have installed multiple instances of the add-on, they, like the folder names, must not overlap. Now the add-on can be launched. The first start may take a few minutes, this is a normal situation. 
You can follow the process on the log tab. If everything is done correctly, it will look something like this. Here, activate all options except for auto update, start at launch, automatic restart in case of failure, and display on the left panel. After the add-on has started, its web interface becomes available. There are no devices here yet, and it's time for us to move to the next step. Zigbee 2 MQTT works directly with Mosquito Broker and Home Assistant doesn't know about it, as both are add-ons in the form of separate containers. To connect, we need an integration, that is, a logical interface that will work with the broker. It is called MQTT, and it automatically appears after it detects the installed Mosquito Broker. Click the Configuration button and confirm it in the next window that appears. Here, the internal authentication mechanism is used, so no further clarifications will be needed. The integration appears in the list of installed ones. One device here is the Zigbee Bridge, Parameters, and Settings of the add-on. In the Coordinator interface, a record of the first connection has appeared, and it's time for us to move to the second one. In my network, there are several network coordinators, and all of them appeared automatically in the Integrations menu, with a suggestion to install Zche Zigbee Home Automation. It can also be installed through the Add Integrations menu. Here it can be found by name. But actually, there is no difference, you can install it however you want. In this menu, I choose the necessary coordinator, in my case, it's Zigstar Use G01. Next, I confirm the port setting. If you have, like me, several such devices in the network, carefully check its address. Here I leave the default value, confirm. Here you need to choose the item, save radio network settings, as it has already been created in Zigbee 2 MQTT. After that, you need to wait some time while the setup is completed and the integration adds the coordinator to the system. Here is its interface and it already shows two connections. In the integrations menu, there are now both ZCHE and MUTT. One device in ZCHE is the coordinator itself. Let's compare the data in the Zigbee 2 MQTT and ZCHE menus. The installed firmware versions and IEEE address match. It's the same coordinator. Now, the main point, how the devices will work. First, through Zigbee 2 MQTT, I added a plug with energy monitoring from the Tuya Smart Ecosystem. Support is standard, here it is in the list. Exposure page. Control works, energy monitoring data updates. In Zche, I didn't take any action, the plug appeared here automatically after adding through Zigbee 2 MQTT. Control works, data updates, no different than if I had added it directly in Zche. In real time, On the left, Zigbee 2 MQTT, on the right, ZCHE. Control is fully synchronous. Energy monitoring sensors, data match, update is also synchronous. Energy Sensor Now let's try the opposite, connect a device in ZCHE. Search mode for new devices. I didn't touch anything in Zigbee 2 MQTT. Device discovered, interviewing started. Let's see what happens in Zigbee 2 MQTT at this time. The same, device interviewing, although here the connection mode is inactive. Done, the device is added. It's a white light bulb from Acura, first version. In Zigbee 2 MQTT, the same, the device successfully passed the interview and was added to the system. This is what all the device objects look like in ZCHE. The same in Zigbee 2 MQTT. The essence of such a mode of operation is that in some cases they can complement each other. When devices are not supported in one of the systems, or some options are available in one but absent in the other. In real time. Control is also synchronous. In some cases, the visual component may differ slightly, which is related to the implementation of the integrations themselves. There might be a slight discrepancy in brightness value. As it is calculated with rounding, the actual brightness changes on a scale up to 255.
Now regarding the removal of devices. In Zigbee 2 MQET, I remove the Acrobulb from the system. Successfully, the device disappears from the list. The system confirms the deletion. In Zche, the bulb also disappears automatically. All is correct. I decided to remove the plug from Zche through the standard menu, and here it is correctly removed. But in Zigbee 2 MQTT, it remained, with control still intact. I had to remove it there again. After that, an artifact appeared in Zche, an active entities of the removed plug, and it had to be manually deleted again. So, it's better to first remove from Zigbee 2 MQTT, and then, if the device remains in Zche, remove it there. But further tests are needed for a definitive understanding. Another point I discovered. When enabling the pairing mode in Zigbee 2 MQTT, error messages appear, but devices actually connect, and it's not visible how much longer this mode will last. In Zche, as far as I could observe, the connection process goes as usual, without errors. As I said, the essence of such a connection is to take the best from both systems and simply disable all that is unnecessary and duplicative. If a device is supported in at least one of them, you will be able to use it without the need to purchase a second coordinator. To clarify again, this only works with network devices, those on USB will have to be physically separated, separately for ZCHE and separately for Zigbee 2 MQTT. And this is another reason to consider switching. That's all. I hope this video was useful and interesting to you. I would be grateful for your likes, as it helps promote it on YouTube. If you don't want to miss new reviews and lessons, subscribe to my channel. In the video description, I will leave links to the mentioned lessons and reviews, stores where you can order such coordinators, as well as my Telegram channel, Facebook page, and a group for discussing smart home questions. Thank you for your attention. Until new meetings, peace to everyone.